Here is Dr. Mark Carlotto. Uh, Dr. Carlotto has done an, an immense amount of work uh, doing these 3D imagery, and he's going to be talking about possible Martian artifacts and some of the uh, recoverable uh, techniques that he did with this uh, imagery. I think you'd be absolutely fascinated. Dr. Mark Carlotto. Thanks, JW. Oh, no. Let me say a few words briefly on how I got involved in this. Um, my background's in image processing and pattern recognition, and I've always been interested in space. In uh, 1985, I saw an article in the Boston Globe about this face on Mars, and I had followed the Viking mission and didn't recall any such discovery. Um, but I was interested, and I uh, got a set of data tapes, uh, and I began to, to play around with the data. I soon found the uh, subject to be extremely controversial. In fact, it still is extremely controversial. Uh, but I was uh, initially um, intrigued by, by the object more at, at a gut level, and it wasn't, an, it wasn't obvious to me that we were dealing with an optical illusion. Uh, I, I, I wasn't willing to buy the conventional wisdom that it was a trick of light and shadow. Uh, and what I tried to do early on was to try to replicate some of the uh, results of DiPietro Molinar uh, and some of the other early uh, Mars investigators. If uh, I could have the first transparency. Uh, the machine's not on yet. The, the, some of the key questions um, uh, that I'd like to consider here, first of all, is it possible to learn more from the data? There are only two high resolution views uh, of the face and these other interesting landforms. Uh, but beyond 2D analysis, can we learn more? Can we understand the third dimension? Um, can we assess the, um, the hypothesis that the face is a trick of light and shadow in a more objective way? Uh, of course, without imagery taken under different conditions, it's hard to do with the raw data. Uh, but I'll, we'll get into the methodology used for generating synthetic views uh, using shape and shading techniques. Uh, and then beyond this, looking at more quantitative ways to assess the naturalness or artificiality of, uh, of landforms, both on the Earth uh, and on uh, planetary surfaces. The key question, I think, here is, are these objects artificial? There's been a lot of discussion lately about who could have put them there, uh, what do they mean? Um, if they're artificial, these certainly will be interesting questions uh, and important questions to ask. But the key question right now is, is are, they, uh, are they artificial? We certainly can't prove that they're artificial using 30 meter, or I'm sorry, using 50 meter uh, Viking orbiter data. Um, perhaps at 10 meters or at one meter with uh, Mars Observer, the hope was that we would begin to see some of the more geometrical details that would uh, give us more of a of a conclusive uh, decision on, on uh, the origin of these features. But even at that resolution, as, as um, uh, Chris McKay pointed out, you really need to go there uh, to, to collect the ground truth to, uh, to know for sure. OK. Uh, next slide, please. We start with the face. Uh, this is uh, the techniques I used are a little different from what you saw earlier. First, the important thing uh, I felt was to remove all of the noise in the data, the salt and pepper noise that's very distracting. It's actually very easy to remove. Uh, there are outliers, pixel outliers, that are caused by uh, telemetry uh, noise, noise in the transmission of the data uh, from the spacecraft to the Earth. They can be detected, and at those points, you can do certain types of replacement operations that doesn't alter the other data, but only uh, affects the, the noise pixels. And that's what you see here. Uh, the image has been cleaned up, uh, and I've applied a, a global contrast stretch. And uh, it's also been blown up by a factor of, uh, I believe, three or four using uh, cubic convolution. And I'll get more into this later, in, into what some of the subtle features that we see in the, in, uh, in the data. Next slide, please. Uh, it's turned around, but probably doesn't really matter. Yeah, 
you could just uh, flip it uh, horizontally. And the other way. Put it back the way it was and then flip it the other way. Yeah, and then now flip it horizontally. Left, right. Just go like that. Left, uh, left, left, right. Oh, flip it left, right. <laughs> that's right. Thanks. Uh, that's that's that, that was correct. Okay. All right. I'll work with it the way it is. Okay, we're oriented, oriented here now so that uh, north is roughly uh, up, if it stays that way. Here's the face in a collection of objects to the southwest. That's been termed the, the city by, uh, by Richard Hoagland. Um, also, uh, some intriguing objects here. This uh, polyhedral object that we'll get into more detail in, uh, in, a, in a little bit. Some other uh, polyhedral objects uh, in this area below. Um, and then if we can go to the next slide. We'll ste step back a little further and we'll get a, um, a greater sense of the context here. We see the face near the middle. The, um, can you lower that a little bit, please? Can you lower that, please? Down. <laughs> That's good, okay. Uh, here we have the face in the middle, these, uh, again, the, the city up in the upper left corner. I don't know if you, can you see the uh, laser pointer from back there? I can't see it. Anyway, the upper left corner is the city. Um, maybe I'll just walk over here and point. Another interesting pyramidal structure uh, over here that some have uh, uh, christened the DNM pyramid after D. Pietro and Molinar. The point in this, in showing you this expanded view, is that looking at the face in isolation uh, really tells us nothing. If this is in fact uh, an artificial structure, uh, it makes sense that there are ar other artificial structures near nearby. And Richard Hoagland has uh, done a great deal of work to show that, in, in others, have to show that the face uh, uh, apparently is aligned with, with some of these other objects and some of these relationships are uh, significant uh, mathematically and also in terms of, of the location of these features on the planet. Uh, Stan McDaniel has written an excellent um, evaluation of our work and if there's a copy of that around, uh, floating around here, you should take a look at that. That goes through um, in detail the work that uh, Richard Hoagland, Errol Torrin, and others have done. Okay, if we can switch to the, to the video for a minute. I'll just show a, uh, a short clip of the original data and some of these enhancements over again. And then following this, we'll move on to, to the work that I did in the shape and shading area, the three-dimensional analysis that JW referred to, and also to some of the fractal analysis. Okay. Again, the point in doing the early in image enhancement work was to try to replicate uh, the work of the uh, people that were doing this earlier, Vince and uh, Greg, John Brandenburg and others. So I should also mention a number of people at SRI. This is the, um, these are the two original images cleaned up, 35A72 and 70A13. We see the face in the lower left corner. Here we see a blow up of the face from 35A72. What's significant about this object, once you uh, begin to play with uh, some uh, the contrast and and, um, and you're careful about cleaning up the noise. You see, there's a, a lot of subtle features in here. There's a crossed pattern uh, in the forehead area. It's present in, in both images. This is 7813. There's also a fine structure in the mouth that some have, have called teeth. Um, I don't know what they are, but it's not noise because it's present in both both images. This. Uh, 7813 and the subsequent contrast stretch shows that the object uh, does have a strong degree of symmetry. It's not perfect, 
uh, but there is a second eye socket, uh, apparently on the right side, the shadowed side of the face, and the extension of the mouth. Going back to, uh, to 35A72, in this enhancement we see a, a broader set of lateral stripes, I don't know if you can see that, um, across the face. But this sort of detail led me to, or leads me to believe that this is less likely to be a natural landform. Because um, as you look closer, you see things that are more interesting. And I don't believe they're artifacts um, of the processing because they're present in both images and both images were, t were taken under slightly different conditions. So this is an overview of the face, the, uh, an object in the city called the fortress. This is the so-called DNM pyramid. There's some uh, disagreement. Some believe it's a five-sided pyramid uh, with one side in shadow. This is another interesting object uh, called the fortress, this five-sided or, or I should say a four-sided uh, trapezoidal shaped object. Um, I use these terms only descriptively. I use them as handles. It's not to endorse any particular function. Uh, it just gives us a, an easy way of re referring to them. Okay. So let me stop this.